Hall of Fame finalists. Dwight Freeney's one of them. 16 years, seven Pro Bowls, fourth most forced fumbles, top 20 in sacks. Uh, to me, Joe Thomas, Darrell Rivas, Dwight Freeney, the automatic Hall of Famers on that list of dudes. And by the way, he just look at Dwight Freeney. The side. Dwight Freeney chased down skinny quarterbacks like me. That is that is a, a <laughs> frightening experience. I got to say, on a serious note, uh, very good news this morning on Demar Hamlin. He's turned a corner. He's now communicating. I cannot imagine right. the emotional lift to the Buffalo Bills and how wonderful they feel. You know, you were a guy that inflicted hits. Right. Um, yeah. Was there ever a moment that you felt the way you felt watching Monday in your career that you got a little you stepped back and got kind of emotional on what you were seeing? I was thinking about that. And, and no, uh, to be quite honest with you, um, you know, we play this game. We understand that this is a violent game, controlled violence. Right. Things happen. All right. Things happen. Guys have knees, Achilles. And once in a blue moon. You might have a spinal situation where a guy's paralyzed or something like that, um, and which is scary, you know, which, you know, you never want to see. But what happened a couple of nights ago, you know, that that was something else. I mean, you you see him get up and you think he's OK. And then all of a sudden it's like he's gone. Um, and you never want to see it. The, the immediate thought is just kind of like, you know, I hope he obviously I hope he's OK and he can make it through. But when you start to perform CPR and ambulances, it, it will blow your mind. There was no chance that game could continue. And, and just the thought of what their, his family was thinking, his mother in the stands, um, all of that is just something that you never want to see. And I'm so happy that he's turning a corner and, and, and hopefully he's winning this battle of life right now. You know, uh, it's interesting. I watch the Jets said, you know, if Zach Wilson could have just sat for a year, uh, it would have worked. And my takeaway is guys got it or they don't. You could sit him for three years. I always felt he was small, undisciplined, not that accurate. I didn't see it in college. So in all your years, now you had Bill Poley in a Hall of Famer as a GM, but Bill told me before he missed on a couple of picks. It happens. Some kids get to camp, and you can tell Dwight in 15 minutes, they don't want to hit. They don't want to play pro football. How long did it take you? Go back to your all your years, uh, just the 11 in Indy. Did you know yeah. pretty much instantly first camp, the kid's going to make it or the kid isn't? Well, you know, I think you have that instinct about you when you see a guy and you see, you know, he has something special. All right. So you look at it and say, OK, you know, he he has a little something to him. All right, now that might be a little explosion, a little fight, whatever that is, you see it. Now, you don't know how long they're going to make it because, you know, this is a violent game, as we discussed. And, you know, he can get hurt or what have you. Um, but for the most part, for the positions that we're talking about, what I, I, I clearly see was, is more of like the position situations. When you're playing a linebacker, you're playing receiver, or you're seeing the running back, it's easier to tell yeah. whether a guy has it or he doesn't. Right. From a quarterback position, it's a little bit different. Yeah, no, it is. You're asking him cognitively to do things. Uh, you're often asking yeah. a guy who's not huge to take hits and punishment. They often go to bad teams. Uh, very, yeah. very few Mahomes where you get Andy Reid and Travis Kelsey. Uh, that, that's not the yeah. way it generally works. So um, your Colts have right now um, their first pick. They're in line for the fifth overall pick. It's a proud franchise. Yep. They've got a lot of good players. They just can't get quarterback right. You've watched some college football, college kids. Is your gut feeling they go quarterback college or quarterback in the pro market? Wherever they go, they better go quarterback. All right, you you got to get that you know kind of hemmed up. All right. And, and I know we've been down the road of, you know, getting the older guys, but those older guys are only going to last a year or two. You know, Philip Rivers, he's going to be a year or two, you know, and, and, and you just you can't just, you know, build for the future. You know, you got Matty Ryan, he's a year or two. You got to get somebody who's young that you can build within your system. All right. And, and get this thing going. Now, it doesn't matter who you got back there. If you don't have an offensive line to block for them, right. it, they're all the same, Con. They are all the same. 
Um, but if we got to get a young guy, so I don't know, or, or somebody who at least has five or six years left um, to play. You're a humble guy, but if I said to you, make a case, what would, now obviously you made a bunch of Pro Bowls, you forced a lot of fumbles, you're top, I think you're 17th or 18th all time in sacks. But what, uh, I, I always make the argument if I have to think about it, somebody's not a Hall of Famer. You, Joe Thomas, Darrell Rivas, I don't have to think about it. What do you think you added that was unique, in your opinion? Well, obviously, this is not up to me, and and you know the, the voters vote, and I've done everything I could. But I will say this: I think I left my mark on the game, regardless of what has happened. You know, I think whenever you see a spin move out there, and guys using the spin move, yep. Prior to me, they weren't using that move. You were actually taught not to turn your back to the quarterback. That's what you were taught, you know. And I think guys used to spin from time to time, but it wasn't as frequently and as planned as it was for me, you know? So whenever you see that, you know, all right, somewhere down that tree, whether he learned it from Vaughn, who Vaughn learned it from me or whatever, I think, you know, that's something that I know I left my mark on the game. You know, when you see a guy that's undersized, quote unquote, being drafted high, most guys like me weren't, wasn't drafted high. We were drafted in the second, third round because we were tweeners. And you had to be a 6'5", 275, 280-pound defensive end to be drafted in the top 15 or what have you. Um, so I think I kind of broke the mold there. And there's some also some protection things that, you know, you know, yeah, you put a running back in the backfield and you chip on the way out. Well, that happened for a century. But when you start seeing tight ends outside, off the ball, motioning, receivers coming to chip, that stuff was implemented because of like me and Robert Mathis and how we got off the ball. There'd yep. be a lot of situations where, where the coach would be like, Dwight, we've never seen this protection before. Yeah. So you're just going to have to deal with it. Yeah. No, you had great influence. I've always said that about Steph Curry literally changed high school, college and pro basketball shots that you got benched for <laughs> when I was in high yeah. school. Absolutely. He literally now he, he eliminated the back to the basket center. Even Jordan didn't do that. So you had influence from pass rushing situations. Uh, it is why when I think of you, it's a no brainer. Uh, one of the good guys, Dwight Freeney, you look fantastic. Uh, I cannot imagine you chasing quarterbacks around. You look great. Congrats on your success, my man. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from the herd or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.